Yeah, hi all. Uh, today we're going to talk about something called the interquartile range. You may or may not have met it before, so this could be revision. Um, but we'll go through it as though you haven't uh, you haven't seen it before. It's a, a measure of spread or variability, just like the range uh, is a measure of spread, so is the interquartile range. Uh, each of these statements I'll explain in full in a moment with an example, but it's the difference between the third and first quartiles and the way we write it, I suppose, for shorthand is IQR, the interquartile range, is equal to Q3, which is the third quartile, minus Q1, which is the first quartile. And we'll describe what the quartiles are in a sec. And uh, one of, I suppose, the benefits of using the interquartile range instead of the range is that the interquartile range is not affected by outliers. So uh, let's just explain all of these using an example down here. And we'll, we'll go through three examples. I have three data sets here ready to go. And so we'll do this three times. It's reasonably straightforward using uh, the method I'm going to show you. But what I would say as well is that you may have come across another method. There are uh, different methods for calculating the interquartile range. And most most of the time, um, with most data sets that you use, you should get the um, you should get the same answer using the different techniques. But there is an odd occasion where two different techniques for calculating the interquartile range will give you a different answer. So it'll depend on which uh, technique you use. But this technique I'm going to use is what I think is the easiest one um, by far to use, and there, there's it's the easiest one to remember as well. So uh, let's get started. So if you have a data set like this, okay, to explain what the quartiles are first. So the median is the uh, middle number in a data set when it's lined up from smallest uh, to biggest. Okay, so the median is actually the um, known as the second quartile. So the median is the number which is uh, fifty percent of the way through the data, or halfway through the data, it's the middle number. The first quartile, Q one, is the uh, point where you're a quarter of the way through the data. So, Q one, the first quartile, quarter of the way through. Q two, the second quartile, is also known as the median, is when you're halfway through the data. And Q three is the point where you're three quarters of the way uh, through the data. OK, so that's all the quartiles are. So what you're doing when you're finding the interquartile ranges, you're taking this number here, which is three quarters of the way through the data, and you're subtracting the number, which is one quarter of the way through the data. And so what you're finding really is how spread out the middle 50 percent of the data is, because if you like, there's 25 percent over here and 25% up here that you're not using. And so it's this middle 50% of the data from uh, from a quarter of the way through to three quarters of the way through, that middle 50%, you're seeing how spread out that is. And that's why the interquartile range is not affected by outliers, because you're not using the numbers at, the ver at either end uh, of the data set, so it's not affected. So that's why it's quite useful to use instead of range. Uh, so, the first example, find the interquartile range of the following data sets. Here's how I go about it. What I do first is I always find the median. So, in this case, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 numbers. So, the, since there's an odd number of numbers, there's just going to be one middle number, and that's going to be the one in the sixth position, isn't it? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, here I'm going to draw a box around this. That's the median there because there's one, two, three, four, five here and one, two, three, four, five numbers here. And I'm going to, it's the median, but just for the sake of this example, I'm also going to call it Q2. So you remember that the median is the same as the second quartile. Okay. And the next thing then is if I want to find the number that is uh, one quarter of the way here, what I do is find the middle number of this first half of the data. So I don't include the median, I just use whatever is left here and I find, if you like, the median or the middle number of this. And we can see since there's one, two, three, four, five numbers here, that the middle number here or the median of this shorter data set, if you like, is five. And that's what I call my first quartile, Q1. Okay, I do the same thing up here, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, since there are five of them, there's one middle number here, it's the 12. And that's my Q3. And then quite simply, if I want to find the interquartile range, my QR is equal to Q3, which is 12, 
minus q1, which is 5, giving me 7. That's my interquartile range. And we can see already that the 143 didn't come into it, so it's unaffected by extreme values. And had there been a very small number here, minus something or other, um, then that wouldn't have been included in the calculation of the interquartile range either. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. And the reason I'm doing a few of these is because it differs slightly in what you're doing depending on whether you have an even or an odd number and depending, I suppose, what even and what odd number as well. So here we go with a similar data set, but this time I've knocked uh, one of the numbers off the end. So there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten numbers here. And uh, since there are 10 numbers, there's going to be two middle numbers, if you like. So 1, 2, 3, 4 here. These are my two middle numbers and 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And my median is this point, which is halfway between the two middle numbers. Now, I don't actually have to calculate what the median is here. I can see it's going to be nine and a half, but I don't need to use that. I'm just going to mark where it is. And quite frankly, you don't have to do any of this notation. I would advise putting the line down here just to mark for yourself, but you don't have to write this in when you're finding uh, the interquartile range either. Um, so then when you've done that, you um, look at either side of the line that you've made. And again, you do like you did above. You take this as a smaller data set and you find the middle number of this smaller data set. And in this case, there are five numbers in it. So again, the middle number here is five. That's going to be my Q1 and one, two, three, four, five numbers up here as it should be. And the middle number here is 11. That's my Q3. And so my interquartile range is going to be 11 minus 5, which is equal to 6. Okay. Uh, so then one more example, slightly different again. And it's going to be... Uh, this time, I think I knocked another one off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine numbers. Now it's an odd number of numbers, just like we had up here, but it's going to be slightly different uh, because uh, we'll see in a second. It's odd for a start, so we know there's going to be one middle number, and that's going to be our median. So uh, one, two, three, four, it's going to be the fifth number, isn't it? Maybe draw a box around that again. Uh, this time I'm not going to write anything underneath it because there is no need to. So one, two, three, four up here, one, two, three, four numbers there. So uh, that's definitely our middle number. Again, when there is a middle number, just like above, we don't use it in any further calculations. We just use what's below it. So uh, this time one, two, three, four. And this time when we're finding, if you like, the middle number in these four, it's going to be a point halfway between these two numbers. It's going to be 4.5 uh, or 4 and 5 is 9 divided by 2 is 4.5 if you like to do it that way and that's my Q1 and up here again 4 numbers so the middle number is going to be here in between 10 and 11 and uh, if you like you want to add them again 10 and 11 is 21 and divide by 2 is 10.5 and that's my Q3. And then if I want my interquartile range, it's equal to 10.5 minus 4.5, which is equal to 6. So uh, I suppose the lesson to learn is when you're finding the median, if there is no middle number uh, as part of the data set uh, as such, then you just mark the point of it and use all the figures over here to find the first quar uh, quartile and all the numbers above it to find the third quartile. If there is a median like there is in each of these uh, examples, uh, just fence it off, mark it, but don't use it when you're um, finding the median of above here or the middle number above and the middle number below when you're looking for the first quartile rather and the um, third quartile.